why mid-year? Because obviously he's, he's very busy and very successful with uh, Ultravox. Well, at the time, it was actually before Midget joined Ultravox, and the rich kids were on the verge of splitting up. And they had some free studio time, knowing that they were going to split up, and we just took use of uh, the studio time, basically because we were running clubs at the time, a club called Billy's, and only had a handful of records, and to create the music that we wanted to play, mm. we were recording stuff. I say, I want to talk about your clubs and all that sort of thing perhaps later on, but first, I mean, what about writing all your material? You say you actually do it yourself? And, and... Yeah, we write together as a band, so I, you know, I don't take a credit. Mm. Uh, we all sort of rehearse, mm. and then in rehearsals, the, the lyrics and the music has been written, because we, like, throughout the year, have access to studios, and then, like, at a certain point, we go in, rehearse the material, mm. and then record the album. Yeah, I see. Now, one of the things that we always do before somebody comes in, we get a biography on yourself. And I noticed while I was reading your biography, it said that uh, you don't sort of, or don't plan to do any tours, or you, at least you don't want to tour. Is there any particular reason why you don't want to do? Well, any tours? at the time it was, it was sort of virtually impossible because of the set, because of the band setup and people being involved in other bands. But now me and Rusty are working on sets to do something it's next year. Great. But it won't be just like an ordinary show. It'll be sort of sets. It'll be like be like a Busby Berkeley movie. Really? Yeah, because I, I would assume that if, if you was really going to go in and do a, a stage show or something like that, I'm sure that you would sort of make it a real event and, and do the whole thing yeah, over, I mean, sort of if, like over the top. Well, if Visage play live, it'll be sort of like an event, but it's got to be so much more over the top than that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's work on sets and things, but um, we're going to get it filmed as well as a mini movie. Oh, yeah, oh that'd be great. So th when, do, when do you say that? It's perhaps sometime next year? Around right about March. Around right about March. Now, quickly, we'll move on to you and your clubs and things. You started Blitz about three and a half years ago, something like that. Uh, you've now moved on and you've done, or as probably people will already realise, you've revamped the Palace in Camden Town, which is doing extremely well. What reason have you gone into, to, or what, what reason do you uh, go into clubs? Well, it's like Visage and the club thing comp combines each other together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, it's like every time a record's put on, it's like as if it's also it's entertaining people as well so it's sort of something that I've always done and I've got time to do it and I just think it's involved in Visage. You obviously probably enjoy just seeing people having a good time and, and making a club into your own sort of personal taste or... Yeah um, and the music knowing that they get you know the music that's being played is great music as well mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it took a long time for actually people to put faith in us to be like back us with a club it's taken like three yeah. years yeah. I mean, you're it. also in your own right you're a cult figure because of your look and all that and and you've been uh, photographed in many big magazines of like vogue and uh, the ritz and all that sort of thing i mean obviously and yet for some reason you seem to try to get away from people's individuality and yet i mean obviously you, you are an individual person yourself don't you aren't you flattered with people trying to copy your styles of dress and things like that yeah, but I've always said I wish people, I mean, I understand that kids have to have someone to look up to, which is great. But I've, I think everybody inside them has got their own individuality about them. And that's what I express when I mm. say that it's not a snobby attitude, it's just, yeah. I don't like to see them being ripped off and things like that. Right. So I just hope they keep their own sort of individuality about it. Right, them. now just quickly, what we've got to do, a little surprise here. I think all the other three gang are coming in Hello. with a, a little yeah. youngster, Paul. Oh, I, I never knew now, about this. Is a, this yeah. 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 So we've got a surprise for you. This is a silver disc that's selling 6,000 copies, 60,000, sorry, uh, 60,000 60, copies yeah. of your oh, album. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Paul. I think I've got, we've got a present for yeah, you. Yeah, Paul is the right. thousandth you. caller. Can we sort of just hold that up for, I'll hold that there while you see to Paul, yeah? Oh, that's great. Right. There's a present from me to you. Yeah, Paul is Thank you very much. Signed. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers, Steve. Right. Um, yeah. So, so <laughs> Paul, you were the one thousandth caller to Kids Time. What did you phone up about? I phoned up about a games convention in London. And did oh. you go along? No, I couldn't in the end, actually. Oh, what a shame. Oh, well, there well, you go. Well, at least you phoned. Yeah. We'll do a review after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I hope you've enjoyed the show today uh, as much as we gifts. have. We'll see you again next week when, amongst other things, we'll be looking at cricket, space travel and the London Youth Games. So I hope you'll find some time to join us then. In the meantime, have an action-packed week and we'll go today with Pig Bag and their latest, The Big Bean. Yeah. Yay. Yay.